I'd spoke, I'd talked to people a lot. I've, I've worked with people a lot about negotiation. It's one of the things that I specialized in, I would say, in my clinical and consulting practice was teaching people how to negotiate. And I can tell you some things about negotiating that you might find interesting and useful. The first is you can't negotiate from a position of weakness. So all of you who are going to be developing your careers in the future, you need to understand that if you want to push your career forward, well, first of all, that you do in fact have to push it forward because if you're competent and silent, you will be ignored. And, and, you know, that's rough because you might think, well, people should reward you because you're competent. And yes, of course they should. But if you're competent and silent, then you're just not, you're not a problem. You're just part of the background that's keeping everything functioning. And so if you want to develop your career in terms of promotion, say, and salary, it's like you have to be competent and you have to be strategic. And to be strategic, when you negotiate for a new position or for a new salary, you have to be able to say, if you don't give me what I want, then something you don't like will happen to you. And what that means, it's not a physical threat, it's, th it's that you have an option. You know, so you have your CV, your resume in order, right? You're educated and competent and desirable to people outside of your immediate job. You're willing to instantly put yourself on, in the job market and undergo the stress of finding a new position and undergoing interviews and all of that. And you have that all planned out so that when you go talk to the person that you're negotiating with with regards to your salary, you're credible. And you see, because they, it's very seldom that you're talking to the person who's at the top of the pecking order, let's say. What you need to do that with them is to tell them a story that they can tell to their boss to make you not a problem. And one, a good story is, look, we really need this person because they're hyper-competent and they have a better offer. It's like, well, then you're going to win the negotiation. But if you go in there with no power, well, you're going to lose, obviously. So the first thing that you need to know if you're going to negotiate is that you have to be able to say no. And what no means is that you're not going to do it. And when I made the videos about Bill C-16, I thought, it through, and I thought, there's no damn way I'm following this law. I don't care what happens. And I didn't say that lightly, I thought it through. I thought, okay, well, let's assume the worst case scenario, and the worst case scenario would be that a student would report me to the Ontario Human Rights Commission, and then they would do an investigation, then they would find me guilty because the Ontario Human Rights Commission finds 99% of the people brought to it guilty because that's what totalitarians do and then I would refuse to pay the fine or cooperate with whatever the re-education they would put me through would be and then that would move to civil court and then I would be fined for contempt and then it would, you know, then the whole legal catastrophe would unfold. And I thought, well, I could either do that or I could allow the government to regulate my speech. It's like, nope, that's not happening. So you might think about that as confrontational. And it is confrontational. It's like there isn't a goddamn thing that can be done to me to make me allow the government to compel my speech. That's not happening.